YouTube, how you doing? Raj from the UK here, and today I thought I'd do something a little bit different. Today I'm going to be talking you through my fragrance collection, which I've built up over the past, you know, maybe three or four years, maybe, maybe three years approximately. I split out into two shelves. The top shelf, which I'm going to show you first in this video, is uh, fragrances from brands where I only own one from the brand, except for a couple of exceptions in there. So uh, let's just get straight into it. On the top here we have a company called DR Harris. I was introduced to this brand from their shaving creams and their um, colognes are just un incredible, really really good, great value. This is costing me about 20-25 pounds for a 100 ml splash bottle. This is Arlington. They have a royal warrant which means they are vendors to um, the Prince of Wales I think it is. And this is a great citrus fra uh, fragrance, Neroli, got a bit of fern in there as well. Quite simple, but excellent for the summer. Uh, I'm definitely looking forward to trying that out um, when the weather warms up. And it's actually been a really great day in London today. Really hot. Next up, we've got Terre d'Hermes. Hermes is just a classic house. This is a classic fragrance, a sort of perennial favourite with a lot of people, I think. Especially if you're going for a sort of suit and tie event. People have often said it's great for suit and tie event, and I definitely agree. Next up we have um, a brand called Ortigia, it's an Italian brand, a little bit unknown actually, I only discovered them recently. And this fragrance, actually uh, I do like to keep the boxes of the fragrances, I just I just like the presentation as well, you know, it's like a whole package for me, fragrances, and uh, this is a Zagara. Great bottle here, uh, this is an orange blossom Neroli scent with a sort of resiny, musky, woody base. Very interesting house, I really want to discover this a little bit more. Uh, Ortigia, they also do a fragrance called Ambra Nera, which is black amber and uh, sandalwood fragrance which I've tried, which are very, very good. Next up we have um, a fragrance from a company called the Anglia Perfumery, set up by a British lady and I think she's actually based in Germany, I'm not 100% sure. But um, Clive Christian came along and bought a company called the Crown Perfumery Company which was a great house established in the Victorian ages in, Lon in the UK, in London actually I think and uh, Clive Christian decided to discontinue the line so this lady decided to sort of try and reinvigorate the house and use the formulas um, which she sort of found or sort of I don't know I don't know if she actually had them but she tried to recreate the line pretty good um, fragrance that sort of quite floral quite powdery um, yeah pretty good got it for free from my dad so that was always, always a bonus in the back we've got a couple of sort of uh, classic uh, houses, Guerlain, Habit Rouge, and uh, I won't pick it up, I don't think I can reach it actually, it's Paca Raban, Pour Homme. Next to that we have a Greek brand called Corres. This is a great fragrance, saffron, amber and cardamom, and um, this fragrance is very very good value. Um, it could last a little bit longer on the skin, but you still get great great scent in there and uh, packaging is really great this company basically has an, uh, a, a focus on um, natural natural basically ingredients and fragrances definitely worth checking out next up we've got Aveda Men Pure Formance Aroma Spray I did a video on that nice spicy citrus herbaceous affair going on there love that fragrance actually great for winter mm. next up another Actually, not just winter, but sort of all year round, I would say. Lacoste, put on. I love designer fragrances. I don't, majority of my fragrances aren't designer, but this is one of my favourite uh, designer fragrances. Really took me by surprise. I, I'm not a fan of anything by Lacoste, except for this one. This is exceptional. Some great reviews out there on YouTube, actually, of this one, so definitely check those out. Um, we've got a couple, uh, there's a couple at the back there. Um, kind of smaller brands, we talk, talk about them. They're still good. Hello Homme, Edition Blanche and Dior Homme Intense. I mean, these are like huge fragrances. Um, everybody's loving them. You just need to type that name into YouTube and you'll see loads of videos, really great videos out there. Hello Homme, Edition Blanche is really great. I think it's citrus, uh, really at its finest actually. Uh, just in front of that, we've got Vetiver 46 by Le Labo. Interesting brand. I like how they have a sort of signature, um, I don't know what you would call it actually, sort of notes running through their fragrance like Gayak wood and pepper. Very very interesting and um, 
I definitely want to try out a few more from their range. Rose 31 I'm a big fan of, and uh, Oud, I think it's 27, I can't remember the numbers. At the front, we've got Lush. There's some videos recently from a guy called Tom, I think it's Tom Barber, his um, YouTube name is. Check out his uh, channel, check out his take on some Lush fragrances, very good. Fire Tree Oil Oud Heart. I mean, these are extremely complex. Um, and they just develop so well on the skin. Definitely worth checking out here. Very simple packaging, actually. Kind of tell, kind of reminds me of a like you could be in a sort of chemist or a laboratory or something. Here we have um, from their sort of EDT line. I think it's actually I think they're Eau de Parfums. I can't be 100% sure. This is Dirty 2543 in there, and then you've got the Smell of Freedom, which is just <laughs> love that. Love how that develops on my skin. And uh, in the back, you can't see them, but I've got some miniature Giorgio Armani scents in there. Um, I think from the whole lot, I probably like Armani Code the best. Um, and I think, what was the other one actually I liked? I think it was Attitude. I think it was called Attitude. Yeah, that's pretty good. Here we have um, another British company called the Cotswold Perfumery. This fragrance is called Amber, and uh, I went, went to the Cotswold actually, and they have their shop there, and they have their... Uh, perfumery there where you can do a tour of the perfumery so definitely worth doing I, I didn't actually do it at the time didn't have enough didn't have enough time but this is a great great scent um, very good value for money kind of ambery spicy yeah if anybody lives in the UK definitely check out the Cotswold perfumery right at the back we have um, Idol de Luban Uzi Affair lots of rum in the top notes I did a review on that so definitely check that out if you uh, if you can. Um, I like to keep the boxes, but they are kind of big and kind of <laughs> quite clunky. But you know, Black Afghano, this is Nasamato. Um, I mean, what a scent! This is just, just you know, when you smell it, you literally have to take at least 10 minutes to just get your speech back because this is just a great scent. You really have very, very unique, expensive as hell, though. But a little goes a long way, you know, one spray and you're set for the whole day. Next up, classic fragrance, Issey Miyake, Low de Si Pour Um. I'm really looking forward to wearing this in the summer. I mean, you can wear it other times of the year, but I'll probably say summer coming up now, I'm really going to get that out and really give that a good wearing. Um, over here we've got Mono de Oreo, a house which I really, really respect. This is Vetiver. And, um, you know, I heard recently that, uh, well, not recently, I knew about this for a while, but the Mono de Oreo actually has passed away from... Um, this uh, kind of surgery which went wrong or sort of you know she developed some complications after that so I think there's a guy there who's who worked with her and is now trying to um, sort of keep the keep the ethos of the company going and great quality fragrances vetiver is one of my favorites and also vanille is on my shopping list you know that's um, they're very exp they're, they're kind of a lot of money to spend you know 125 pounds but you get 100 ml and there's some other fragrances niche brands out there which are charging you a lot more for a lot less so I definitely really respect that brand. Next up we have a, a scent which I bought quite recently actually. Normally, I, as I said, I, as you can see, I like to keep the box, but I thought I'd just get this one out and show you the bottle. This is Kiko or Keiko? Is it Keiko? I think it's Keiko Michieri. Um, what a bottle. I mean, this has just got a nice weight to it. It could be like a paperweight in some ways. The top is actually plastic, but it's kind of, um, it's, it's kind of like carved or shaped kind of looks like a crystal stopper almost on a on a sort of um, a rum decant you know one of those decanters you get like a crystal decant absolutely superb fragrance this I have a feeling this one could be uh, one of my favorite fragrances um, you know the top three it could be uh, I have to test it out a little bit more um, excellent fragrance here we have a company called Jack Black um, this is actually this is an alternative, not necessarily a cheaper alternative, but a nice alternative to Terre d'Hermes. It's described as it's got smoky papyrus, exotic tiger orchid, and what was that? What's that say? Black amber. Really nice fragrance. Nice box as well. Very round. On the back it says "Seek Truth, Not Trends." I try to. Anyway, over here we've got Lorenzo Villoresi, Piper or Piper Nigrum. I think that means black pepper. Very simple fragrance, but extremely well done. Black pepper and citrus. Then we have Floris, a British brand. Love this brand. Great fragrance. Really want to get into it a little bit more. 
So that's it for now. Stay tuned for part two. I am